after a long offseason, the 2014 TM Master Cup Series season begins here in Fontana. Winning the Delano Pole Award is Melanie Clavino. Winning the pole in her first start with Hottis Walter Racing, her teammate Adrian Devereaux has won the season opener the past two years. On row two, Yelena Sova in car number 10. Great effort there from Lynx. Leonard Roderick alongside the two Lenards in row three. Kuznetsov and Rossini in row four. Henton and one of the Gesslers in row five. Carlos Raquetta and Kurt Pliskin in row six. Gabriel Messina, the highest qualifying independence trophy car in row seven. The two Black Diamond cars in row eight and one of the promoters options in row nine. The second EFR car and Greg Woodard in row 10. The two alert cars in row 11. Row 12, you got Ryan Matthews. Great effort from him and Packer Carroll. Look out for both of them. David Gregorian, the second promoters option in row 13. Great effort from Benoit Vukler to start 28th in car 42. And uh, going back here, also you got Tom Moore in one of the Degarmer Delgado cars. They've had a rough time in practice as of the Team Star USA entries. Axel Anderson having a rough qualifying effort there, as well as uh, Brandon LaRoe. Matthias Taub hit the wall in his lap. Maximus Racing and Velocity Motorsports, to no surprise to have anyone bring up the rear of the field. They've had a rough time getting up to speed all week. And here we are. The 2014 TM Master Cup Series season is green, and Melanie Clavino gets a great start with Adrian Devereaux trying to make some, trying to make a run around the outside, it looks like. No, Roderick trying to make a three wide in car number four. He uh, thought better of that, uh, entering the first turn as Melanie Clavino takes the lead. Devereaux slots in behind his teammate, Yulina Sova in car number 10. Maybe trying to peek in. Yes, Nasova trying to peek in under Devereaux. Now looks like Devereaux is setting himself up to make a run at Clavino coming into three. As uh, here they come, Clavino almost shuts the door, but Clavino going to hold the outside. Adrian Devereaux on the bottom, but Clavino gets getting a great run through three and four. Melanie Clavino into the lead of the race. Great run around the outside to hold on to the lead and car number two now in position one. The Lynx cars beginning to fall back a little bit as Luciano Savarol begins to go three wide in car number five, that black and green car. And, oh, we got a car into the wall. We got a car into the wall in the back of the field. And uh, here's Joe Lenick, and it looks like it could have been him. Car number 23, it's a retro paint job in the Sar USA cars. He gets mugged by Ben Atkins and gets put into the wall. Lap two, a little early for that. That's going to end Lennox night. A lot of damage to the right side, end of the back of that car. Since this race was uh, rain delayed by about four hours, several of the teams, in fact, everyone really, won't, looks like they're going to come in and check tire wear here. Packer Carroll in car number 18, however, ran over some debris, and uh, it appears to have done quite a bit of damage to the underbody of car number 18. And uh, looks like it's going to be enough to take Packer Carroll out of the race, our first mechanical DNF of the year. Disastrous pit stop for Melanie Clavino, Clavino in car number two. Actually, Mr. Pitstall and Arto Kekkonen is going to take over the lead of the race in car number nine. So the uh, the Finn ha having a uh, pretty good start to the season so far, it looks like. Uh, most everybody looked like refueled a little bit, just to play it safe. Fuel mileage very much on everyone's minds uh, because these are not the biggest fuel cells in racing. As Roderick takes over the lead in car number four, Look at that black and uh, that black and green Lennard. Luciano Salvarol having a great run. His teammate Jacob Cart hanging on up here too. Jacob Cart, of course, who won at the Fraser Coast Motor Park last year, and uh, as a substitute driver for Volpe. Oh, oh, Chris Johan's in trouble. Car number 12, alert. It's the American Launch Energy Racing Team. Ah, uh, they've had some problems with that 12 car. Looks like already. Both the Lynx cars still hanging on to the front runners. Lynx Racing had a disastrous offseason again. They had um, quite a few engine blow-ups, but once again, as soon as the season starts, they're right on the base. Scott Stoidler, car number 13, the second in the alert. Oh, he's coming in too. So both the alert cars in trouble, and it looks like another car in trouble. That's the Scam Corp 99. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. of Sealand uh, is an independent trophy contender this year, driving the same car he ran here last year. Uh, so Quiggles Jr. has got some work ahead of him, as does Carlos Danzello in the 180 car. It's one of the Velocity Motorsports MZ6s. And um, to say that they've had uh, that him and Dan McKay have had a rough uh, time of things this week would be an understatement. They're well off the pace and have already lost the pack. Kurt Pliskin is in this 16 car, that yellow car. Very familiar paint job from for Kurt Pliskin and his uh, fan base. Kurt Pliskin definitely. Um, uh, he's, he's had a, such a terrible year by his standards last year. Even though he did win a race, he had uh, he failed to finish the race and so many times that it was becoming, um, well, oh, more problems for Chris Johans. 
So I was saying, uh, looks like those problems from the 12 car might be terminal. Quiggles Jr. about to go a lap down. But as I was saying about Fliskin, he had so many, he had such a terrible year last year. But he uh, looks like he's um, hell bent on reversing that already. The two Lenards going by Roderick. Oh, there's Quiggles Jr. holding the line. But Luciano is going to go right around the outside. Luciano Savaral, the Brazilian, very brave move there. Jacob Carr didn't feel safe following him. But uh, Luciano Savaral felt perfectly fine doing that. Savaral's raced with Quiggles Jr. before. But uh, that Lenard team, formed by a lot of people who used to be part of Flash Racing, including Adam Sampson, who brought them... Oh, Jacob Card into the pits. So one of the Lenards in trouble. Jacob Card into the pit lane. And car number six, the Schaefer Group machine. Kevin Dwyer moved over to Gessler over the, over the winter, replacing Matthias Taub. And Kevin Dwyer in this eight car... Uh, one thing that we're expecting from uh, Kevin Dwyer is for him to uh, maybe get a second win. But Kevin Dwyer said he's going to take the start of the season a little bit easy. He's just going to get used to the car and used to the team. And then once he does that, he's, he said he's going to feel, uh, when he feels a little bit more comfortable with the car and team, he's said he's going to try to push for more uh, ra for more race wins. As Carlos Raquetta in the 14 car is battling there with Melanie Klavno. He's having some problems getting through the field, it looks like. Raquetta in the cats of his... He starred last year in pretty much every race he showed up in. On debut, he, he qualified in the top 20 in a Manicor car. Here's Jacob Card, speaking of starring last year. Uh, Raquetta qualified in the front row of the race that Card won last year. So Jacob Card, despite the fact that he is a rookie of the year contender, has a win to his name. Arto Kekin in car number nine is pulling away, but it uh, looks like the Lenards are kind of helping each other out as Card has brought Sovereign up to him. With a little bit of drafting help, and there's Dan McKay in the 360. Oh my goodness, Dan McKay is off the pace. This 360 car. Oh, hang on, this could get a little messy. As uh, Jacob Card is now stuck behind the 360 car, but better card than anyone else because Card's not battling with them for position. In fact, I think Jacob Card might be the most annoying lap car there is out there right now because he's actually one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. But uh, as you can see right here. He's clearly got a very fast car, and he's trying to unlap himself. Uh, cut tire on the six car. Whoop. Oh, no, no. It's not just a cut tire earlier. There's definitely something wrong with that car. Jacob Card pulling it to the inside. Could be something more serious this time. But um, car number six looks like he's slowing down. There's, I see a little bit of smoke coming out of the back. Jacob Card is definitely out of the race at this point. Very, very tough luck for the Canadian. Here's Kevin Dwyer getting, trying to get by Dan McKay. Oh, oh, Dan McKay and Kevin Dwyer. Dan McKay and Kevin Dwyer touch. Nearly sending and uh, sent Greg Woodard in, the, in that uh, bright green 41 car up into the wall. Here comes Raquetta. Here comes Zach Duff in the 77. And Melanie Clavino into the pits. Melanie Clavino into the pits, but this is not exactly a scheduled stop, but it's a little early to be scheduled. Wonder if... Um, Melanie is trying to get out of traffic or throw the dice a little bit. Ryan Matthews in the 06 car running on the points at the moment. This is a car that could be a dark horse for the Independence Trophy. This is really a true independent team. They're not getting an Omega car. They're doing everything in-house. He's going to be running in the Far Series this year, and uh, he's definitely a favorite for that championship. And Ryan Matthews is a very, very good race driver. Carlos Donzello going a lap down as well in car 180. And here is Melanie Klavino. Now... Uh, Melanie is running around with both the Maximus cars, uh, but she did she did pit, so she, you can see how much faster she is than the 94. B oh no! Pushanda puts Melanie into the wall. BJ Pushanda, Melanie Klavino came on him so fast that Pushanda did not have enough time to get out of the way, and that's really the danger of some tracks like this. On board now with Melanie Klavino, car number two. That is, that purple car behind, that's Bushanda. You can see she's going to commit to the outside. She's committed to the outside. Bushanda just moves over on, and I really don't think Bushanda had any business doing that because I think you should have known Melanie was coming. At least the spotter should have told him, but they got mirrors on these cars for something, so. Railroad visibility isn't that bad. It's not as bad as it used to be out of these cars. Luciano Savarol looks like Roderick is staying out with, and so is Adrian Devereaux, but that's, now that's interesting. Ah, I see. Oh, Roderick Devereaux pitting late, pitting very late. To uh, get as much out of fuel mileage as possible, Chris Davenport is the other car that pitted on one to go with the, when some base car lights went off. Savarol and Anderson are the only two cars that didn't pit at all. 
Oh, they're going to be regretting that one. Luciano Savaral was sold a dummy by Leonid Roderick and Adrian Devereaux. And there you see Melanie Klavan was a lap down. Car number five, though, he's, he is not going to be doing all that well as far as fuel is concerned. Luciano is definitely going to be kicking himself. For that. Oh, he, oh, we got a big wreck. Big pile up in the back. That's Melanie Clavino in it again. Scott Stoiler, Ian Cooper. McKay is in it. Looks like Loro might be in it. Uh, Kuznetsov, that's the Katsov that's in it. There's two Katsovs. They look the same, where it's not Raketa. So you're looking at Dan McKay. And McKay is... Not a, uh, Dan McKay just runs right in the back of Melanie Clavino, right in front of the whole field. There is the 15 car in it. Greg Woodard is in it. Lewis Kingston got a piece. Tom Moore in it. Oh, that was that was unnecessary. And that uh, definitely that is that is worth a review by the stewards. Here's Leonard Roderick. He left the pits, hurrying, trying to catch up to the pack. And uh, he takes the green. Now watch just ahead of him. Gonna see where. I uh, just about to see where everything. Oh, we got one car slow. Looks like Ike Derb in the 58 car. And there goes McKay and Clavino. And then everything just starts descending into madness. Roderick, nowhere to go. Brakes on these cars aren't. Uh, may not be that good on some of the speedways. Uh, but Adrian Devereaux rocketed through all that. Picked up some debris, punctured a tire. Roderick led on the restart, though. He didn't pit at all. Uh, There's a lot of debris everywhere. A lot of a lot of people very concerned about running debris over. Because uh, these tires really don't like running over debris all that well. Uh, as you see, uh, Roderick's teammate Rossini running behind him in second. Still got a lot of race left. So Scott Bates hanging around in third. The two Lynx cars and David Krikorian from the Los Angeles area is peeking around uh, in, the, in the top five as well in car number 04. The two Aperture Science Volpes continue to lead Roderick and Rossini. So, uh, to see, it looks like everything settling down just a little bit, but uh, you still got a big pack of cars right behind them. Car number four, Roderick, leading his teammate Alessandro Rossini. Gabriel Messina is having a pretty strong run here. This is only his second run and this team's first run. He ran at Brazil last year in his home race, but uh, he's running here with the, uh, with the SAR of Brazil team. It's um, basically the Brazilian wing of SAR is fielding a Master Cup team for the Independence Trophy. And Messina is the driver driving a two-year-old eagle that Matt Taylor actually put in the points here last year. Carlos Raquetta in car 14 doing the best he can for uh, Cats of Engineering, and Matthias Taub in the 21 car beginning to poke his nose around up here. Kingston in car 17, oh. Kingston a bit high, a bit high and a bit slow. Manicor Engineering to Moto, uh, going backwards a little bit. Oh, Roderick, looks like he's pulling low, slowing down, letting his teammate go, or is he, oh, Roderick's got a problem. I wouldn't be surprised, we're having a lot of tire problems today, it looks like. As Alessandro Rossini takes over the lead in car number three, the uh, a lot of people were a little bit surprised when Rossini got the call to come to drive the second Volpe alongside Leonid Roderick. Roderick spoke very highly of him, and it looks like Roderick um, definitely uh, uh, looks like he knew what he looks like he knows what he's talking about. Here's Arto Kekin in car number nine, beginning to work his way back to the front of the field, and that's Zelda Ashby in that green and gold car back there. Rossini now, he's caught Dan, oh, look, you see how slow that 360 car is. Dan McKay, almost no business being out there anyway. But here comes Arto Kakinen, and here comes the pack. Rossini's lead just got wiped out because Dan McKay doesn't know what a mirror is. Uh, here comes Kakinen right around him. Uh, looks at McKay getting swarmed by the leaders. The Henton going around him on the inside. There's Ashby in that green and gold 55 car who nearly won the championship last year. Scott Bates. In his usual uh, sort of burgundy and uh, silver car, Kurt Pliskin in the yellow car, and Dave Krikorian in that black and yellow for a knack car coming through as well. Savaral beginning to make some headway. Here's Ashby in that 55 car, the Visit Hyrule machine. Ashby uh, moved over to Black Diamond Racing. That seems to have been the right move, even though FP ever since FPO more or less got booted off the uh, full-time roster. The other uh, FPO no longer series regulars as Adrian Devereaux moves into the lead. Matthias Taub is encountering some problems. It's been interesting things going on with the Vernisham. You notice the exhaust in that car are very much like are very uh, close to the front wheels. Interesting, interesting concept they have going on there. Adrian Devereaux, car number seven, continues to lead the race. He's now coming upon Brandon Laroe in car number 39. 
Laro sees him. That row goes right on by. Laro in that 39 car has actually been pretty solid. Uh, I don't think too many people are expecting much from him, but uh, I think he uh, might pleasantly surprise some people in that 39 car. But Devro now beginning to pull away from Arto Kakinen as Zach Duff in the 77 is encountering problems. He's been faster than both his teammates, which is which I'm not sure what that says about the Mitchell and Sons driving lineup, but Zach Duff may be working his way into a managerial position, but either way, I think there might still be some good runs left for Duff as you see Kevin Dwyer and Davina Henson into the pits as our scheduled stops. You can actually tell the difference between the Lynx cars if you look at the, uh, the uh, front splitter on those cars. Arto Kakin in, into the pits, Adrian Devereaux in, one lap later on lap 61. As here you got, uh, as, uh, ah, Arto Kakinen beats Luciano Savarol out of the pits. Kakinen moves by the five. Where's Adrian Devereaux? There he is. And Devereaux's going to pull up. Is Arto going to get a run? Yes, Arto Kakinen's going to take the lead from uh, as a result of those pit stop cycles. But look how close that was. Adrian Devereaux trying to fight back, but he's not up to speed yet. Arto Kakinen is, and Arto Kakinen says bye-bye and is going to assume the lead. In that number, in that silver and blue number nine car, here's Roderick in the Aperture Science Volpe, car number four, moving along, moving on the inside of David Krikorian in the Renat car. This is the battle for eighth. So as you can see there on the left, uh, Roderick having a uh, pretty, having a pretty strong run here. After four championships, he's still got plenty left in him. Davina Henton right behind the, the this battle here. Davina Henton running in tenth in car number uh, eleven. As uh, Dave Krikorian may be trying to have a run at Roderick. Krikorian, who's um, hot as Walter Racing, kept on board because they said that Krikorian's a great test driver and uh, they want to get Krikorian his first win as a promoter's option. Benoit Vogler is running an 18th. He's about to go lap down. Arto Kakinen stuck behind the Carlos Donzello. Here comes Adrian Devereaux a roll through. Now, this is a difficult situation for Benoit Vogler because he's lapping Donzello as well. And uh, he's got to worry about keeping himself at the points because remember, he's 18. That's worth valuable points, especially for a team like Tutino. That's very, very valuable points. And Tutino was able to do, um, Tutino was pretty good at uh, scrapping a lot of uh, 18th, 19th place finishes last year. Adrian Devereaux and Arto Ke Oh, they got Azuma Kazuyama in one of the Maximus cars, the Great Wall of Kazuyama. Good Lord, that Maximus car is all over the place. As uh, Benoit Vukler really is going to get caught up in this as well. More by default than anything else as Arto Kaganen sort of uh, pulls away from Adrian Devereaux. Vukler giving Devereaux a lot of room there. I think Benoit Vukler learned to decatur what Adrian Devereaux can be like. Uh, lets him go. Luciano Savarol catches Devereaux and is going to go right on by. Savarol in the five car. Could Lennard win in their first race back? It certainly looks like they'll at least get a podium run here as Adrian Devereaux nearly got stuck by Dan McKay. And I really don't think Adrian Devereaux wanted to get stuck by Dan McKay. Here's Carlos Ricchetta running up at 10th. Uh, you want to talk about having a great run. Uh, this kid, Ricchetta, is having a fantastic showing for Katsiv. An attract that they weren't expected to do very well at. They've only won once outside their native Russia. Ricchetta oh, oh, we got problems. Kevin Dwyer, Ricchetta's in it. Oh, oh, one of the Lynx cars in it. Dan McKay, no brakes. Oh, Zach Duff in the 77 car. And uh, it piles into it as well. Now, oh, we, what happened here? It's Azuma Kazuyama, car number 92. What happened here? And he starts slowing, so he's got a problem, but he's pulling it to the bottom when he really, there's so many cars. Nearly takes out Peter Short and Greg Woodard. And right in front of Kevin Dwyer, who had nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Really should not have done that at all. Nope. Oh, that was Quiggles Jr., not Dan McKay that piled into that. No brakes. And Zach Duff stomped on the brakes, but not enough. Brown board with Brandon LaRoe. Brandon LaRoe was on the brakes, and then he picked up the gas again. I don't get that at all. Messina's in it in the 71. Or at least I think that's Messina. Looked like him. Oh, problem for Ashby. Ashby rolled the dice, stayed out. But Ashby's got a problem in the 55. Pulls that car to the inside. Roderick got stuck a lap down, and there aren't many cars still running, but looks like Ashby in the 55 car might be out, as Arto Kekkonen has a run for the lead. That was a very disjointed restart there. Car 55, I don't think there's any power in that car, but they're not bringing the yellow out for it, because Ashby is in a safe place. Ashby's pulled that car across the grass, but Arto Kekkonen has moved into the lead. 
Devereaux right behind Arto and I think there was a little bit of contact there between the Frenchman and the Finn. Rossini having a strong run there in car number three. Looking a bit behind Rossini, Kurt Pliskin. Kurt Pliskin is still in the hunt here. Here is Arto Kekkinen in car nine. We could be three wide here. Devereaux on the bottom, Kekkinen in the middle, and Savarel on top. And Rossini right behind him. And there you see right in the background, Pliskin sort of lurking around. Back there as Adrian Devereaux moves into the lead of the race in car number seven. Rossini works with Devereaux to get him out front. And coming down the back straightaway, three wide here. Pliskin has caught them, and Arto Kekkinen has assumed second, but Pliskin has caught him. Roderick now right behind. Pliskin now behind his teammate, uh, trying to stay out of the way. Uh, I think and there's Ashby trying to rejoin the race in the 55 car. So Ashby, I don't think out of the race yet. That's, that was that green car you saw in the apron as Matthias Taub in car number 21, not in the lead lap, but um, Arto Kakinen now trying to run down Adrian Devereaux in car number seven, and he's going to get a little help in the name of Dan McKay. Car 360, who's actually running in the points at the moment because there's just not enough cars left because there are so many retirements that both Velocity cars are currently in the points on debut. I think there's going to be quite a few people not happy with them, but that's besides the point. Uh, Arto Kakinen having a run at Adrian Devereaux now, coming into one. Luciano Savarol and Kurt Pliskin are right there. Pliskin and Savarol almost made contact. And uh, Arto Kakinen now into the lead of the race. Devereaux coming, trying to make a run on the outside, three and four, like his teammate Melanie Cla uh, Claveno did on the first lap. As uh, Savarol and Pliskin uh, were peeking to the outside, Devereaux makes the run on the outside, and it looks like he's going to get it. Adrian Devereaux to the lead of the race, around the outside. Great stuff up here at the front of the field as the laps begin to wind down. Pliskin having a run around Arto Kekkinen in car number nine as Adrian Devereaux begins to, uh, begins to uh, have a pretty good run away from them. Begins to uh, uh, well, pull away a little bit. As we're now looking at, now looking at Pliskin, Rossini right behind him. Rossini makes a bold move. Alessandro Rossini from Italy in car number three. An Italian has never won a Master Cup race before. He is certainly trying to be the first Italian to win a race. Adrian Devereaux now, car number seven, beginning to stretch his advantage even more over Kurt Pliskin as he's beginning to he's beginning to come down on Carlos Donzello. They've gotten the white flag. So Adrian Devereaux now, he's gonna have to deal with Donzello here in the final lap of the race. Devereaux, Donzello, not, Donzello doesn't give him a lot of room. Pliskin might have a run on him. Adrian Devereaux, no, looks like he's gonna be able to get around Donzello cleanly. Kurt Pliskin, right there in that 16 car. It's not enough, but Adrian Devereaux, third year in a row, he wins the season opener. Devereaux wins it over a very narrow margin over Kurt Pliskin, and I can't imagine he would have been happy if he would have lost that because of a lap car. Kakadin completes the podium, Savarol in fourth, and Alessandro Rossini rounds out the top five. Henton, Krikorian, Kingston, Ryan Matthews, great run for him, and Axel Anderson gets his rookie of the year bid off on the right foot. Messina also got a good run for his Independence Trophy bid in car 71. Roderick, car number four, first car off the lead lap. Velocity Motorsports brought their cars home in 18th and 20th for Carlos Ricetta and Dan McKay, respectively. Both cars were underweight, and as a result, both were disqualified. Uh, bumping Carlos Ricetta and Kevin Dwyer up into 19th and 20th, despite the fact that neither one of them finished the race. And you may notice that the championship points are really not much different. The only thing you have to take into consideration is the five-point bonus that Melanie Claveno got for winning the pole. And the independent trophy shows Ryan Matthews on top in car number 06 as a result of his ninth place run here today. Messina, Ike Durbin, and Quiggles Jr. all have a bit of work to do if they're going to unseat Ryan Matthews. 21 independents will take part over this 25 race schedule. The next race will be at the very tricky triangular short oval in Carbondale, Illinois.